will shoot. And then we're going to type in test, uh, press enter, and then enter our password. And uh, it should connect to the server. So you can see it's setting up the DNS interface. Gave us 10.0.0.2 IP address. And then basically figures out how much data it can send through the DNS packets. And once it figures out all that, it should be up and running. Uh, you can test it by pinging the server uh, at 10.0.0.1. And if you're able to ping the server, the DNS tunnel should be working properly. All right, now that we know everything's installed right and everything's working, we can set up the DNS tunnel. To be able to do this, you need to have access to a real domain, like Infinitysys.com. And our service provider for Infinitysys.com, DreamHouse, allows us to create custom DNS records for our subdomains. So what we did is we added the subdomain tunnel, which is a name server that points to server.infinitysys.com. And server.infinitysys.com has the IP address of our PC running the iodine server. Basically what this means is any DNS query ending with tunnel.infinitysys.com will be delegated to our server.infinitysys.com. This way we can send DNS packets from our laptop to the default DNS server, to DreamHost's DNS server, and then to our PC running iodine. So this is the basic idea behind the DNS tunnel. The iodine client running on our laptop will encapsulate our internet traffic into DNS queries. So the DNS packet will have a bunch of encoded data, then .tunnel.infinitysys.com, which is sent to the default DNS server, uh, which in this case is the Starbucks DNS server. This DNS server will have information about infinitysys.com. However, it will need to request information from DreamHost's DNS server about the subdomain tunnel. The DreamHost DNS server delegates the query to our PC running the iodine server. The iodine server will decode this internet traffic, do what it needs to do, and then send back uh, encoded internet traffic to our laptop. And that's how DNS tunneling works. The command that we use to run the iodine server is iden, the unused IP address 10.0.0.1, and then tunnel.infinitysys.com and uh, that just informs it to only respond to DNS requests ending in uh, tunnel.infinitysys.com. Enter your password and uh, the server's all up and running. Also, if your server's sitting behind a router, you want to make sure you port forward UDP port 53. And another thing, the server needs to be running an open SSH server. Uh, for information on how to do that, uh, watch episode 14. Now that the iodine server is all configured and up and running, we can go to our local hotspot and use DNS tunneling to bypass access controls. Alright, we're at a local hotspot here, and if you open up a browser and try to browse to a web page, uh, you automatically get redirected and they want you to pay money for internet. So, obviously we want to use the DNS tunnel. So the first thing we need to do is make sure that DNS packets aren't blocked. And an easy way to do that is just to ping uh, some website like infinitysys.com. And if you notice on the first line it says infinitysys.com and then the IP address. Um, so that means it went to the DNS server, retrieved infinitysys IP address, and uh, that tells us that uh, DNS queries are not blocked. So now we can use our iodine client to connect to our DNS tunnel. And the command to do that is just iodine-f tunnel.infinitysys.com. Then you just enter the password. It sets up the interface. Um, it's doing that auto probing to figure out the maximum size of a uh, you know host name that I can put in a query. Alright, now that's all set up, it's uh, sending DNS queries to our DNS tunnel, and then we can use we can use PuTTY to connect to the SSH server that's running on our server PC, and to do that we just do 10.0.0.1 and then port 22, 
And we also want to set up an SSH proxy, that way we can tunnel our internet traffic through the DNS tunnel. I'm just going to log in here. Apache. Alright. Everything's working. I can go to Firefox now. I'll go to Options. And then change my network connections. I'm just going to do a manual proxy. Delete everything else and then put uh, localhost for SOC host and port 8000 or whatever port that you use and push OK and uh, now I should be able to browse any any website through the DNS tunnel. You may notice that it's not the fastest connection in the world but it is bearable um, so there you go And uh, if we open up Wireshark here, we can see those DNS queries as they go across the wire. Um, you can see all that encoded data in the DNS request. And uh, that's basically it. The last method that we want to show you is the ping tunnel. Although most hotspots block IMCP uh, packets, it might be still useful to know how to create a ping tunnel. Like the DNS tunnel, we have to set up a server computer. We'll be using CentOS again, and you just need to go to the ping tunnel website and download the tarball. Just download it from freshmeat.net. and just extract it and to install it on CentOS we'd need to first download the lib pcap uh, libraries and uh, you can just do that with yum install lib pcap uh, and as you can see I've already done that and then you can just type in make and then make install if you happen to be on a Ubuntu computer you can just do sudo apt dash git install ptunnel and to run the server all you have to do is type in ptunnel and that's it and now we're ready to hop over onto our uh, laptop and install the client for the client you're going to use the same code that we use for the server um, however, when I uh, was compiling on my Windows computer, I had a little bit of problems with their uh, make file, so uh, I had to do it manually. But uh, I'll be posting the Windows binary on the website, so you can just download that. And uh, what we want to do is we want to make sure that we can ping um, the server computer, server.infuses.com, and. Uh, And although we got a reply, uh, it's not guaranteed that it's going to work. Uh, most hotspots do block ping traffic. Uh, but anyways, we'll do ptunnel.exe, and then we'll do dash p. And